Welcome to the Facebook Live with Vice President Katainen on uh, plastics. So, is plastic fantastic or, fantastic or something more could be done about it? Uh, so, my, uh, as you know, the European Commission presented last week a uh, plastic strategy. And so, we will see with uh, Vice President uh, what is the meaning of this strategy, what is the purpose, and you are free to send your questions. We are ready to reply uh, to your questions. So my first question to Vice President is, is plastic fantastic, as we used to say in the 60s, as it was said to Dustin Hoffman in the famous movie The Graduate, or is all plastic bad, as other people uh, say uh, today? What is your position on plastics and what is the meaning of the strategy? Yeah, the plastic is good uh, material. It improves the quality of packaging, for instance, and it's um, plastic is basically part of our society everywhere. But we just have to make sure that we can reuse it and also reduce the use of plastic. Because uh, if nothing has been done, the use of plastics, in other terms, oil, is uh, growing exponentially. So that's why we have to do something. And what we are planning to do is following. We have four major issues which I would like to raise. The first one is that by 2030, all packaging plastic must be recyclable. In other terms, it means that European Commission is about to create a standards for plastic packaging. So once there, uh, there are less lesser number of different plastics which are used for packaging, it's easier to recollect and reuse. Second thing, we want to promote the use of recycled plastic. Only 6% of overall consumption of plastic today is recycled plastic. And one reason for this is that we don't have quality standards for recycled plastic. So that's why we will create quality standards. These two measures together will create a single market for uh, plastic waste and single market for reduced plastics. Third element is, and this will be legislative proposal later this year, we will further restrict the use of single-use plastics. We have successfully done so with single-use plastic package, um, bags. So member states have taken various measures to restrict the use of single-use plastic bags and now we want to widen the scope. We don't know yet what kind of products will be included but uh, we hear more this later. And, and finally, biodegradable plastics. At least I thought that all the biodegradable plastics are good, but now I have learned that they degrade only in specific circumstances. So, and I was told that never mix biodegradable plastics with another plastics because it, it may destroy the whole recycling uh, uh, process. So, so we will also create standards for biodegradable plastics. So you're not declaring a war on all plastics, but you want to help, we want to help the uh, citizens also to, uh, to know what is the good one and the bad one, which one is more biodegradable from which is not, is it correct? Exactly, so basically uh, our aim is to reduce the production and use of plastics Second, to recycle plastics much more, so we can get more out of existing plastic stock. And third, we want to energize consumers to make conscious uh, choices. Okay, let's go to the questions from our viewer. Simus asks, how do we maintain year-on-year -year economic growth and a habitable planet? If higher GDP requires more new energy, plastic and other resources to be used, then wouldn't that appear to be at direct odds with our goal of eliminating plastic waste and waste in general? This is a very important and uh, fascinating question in a sense that only rare things um, make me so energetic than looking at plastic strategy, but more largely speaking, circular economy. So the short answer to your question is circular economy. We need, or welfare society needs economic growth. But at the same time, we can reshape the market economy to, be, to become more sustainable. So instead of uh, digging raw materials, producing materials, 
uh, and producing products and throwing away them to the um, to the landfill we can encourage companies to shift their business model from current linear to circular so we can circulate raw materials over and over again and this is one of the ways how we can combine economic growth sustainable economic growth and also environmental concerns and Frank asks, why don't we just forbid plastic bottles and make returnable glass bottles mandatory? In many countries, for instance, in Finland, Estonia in, and in Germany, we have a, a deposit scheme, meaning that once you buy either a plastic or glass bottle or even aluminium can, there's a deposit in the product. And once you return them back to the shop, you can get um, your money back. So this system functions extremely well in those countries and all those products glass plastic and aluminium cans are recycling over and over again so i, I was also thinking a few years ago whether glass bottle is better than plastic bottle but then somebody told me that imagine the difference in weight glass is uh, heavier than plastic so uh, also the transport is one factor which we have to take into account when looking at emissions, CO2 emissions, for instance. Uh, carrying uh, heavier uh, bottles uh, consumes more gasoline than, than carrying uh, lighter bottles. So plastic bottle as such is not a problem if you can, uh, if you can recycle it, not, not as a waste, but as a bottle. So in those countries, for instance, um, in Estonia, you can use uh, plastic bottle as such over and over again. And Andreas is wondering whether more enforcement would be the way forward. Totally ban of single-use plastic, forcing the member states to recycle more and to invest more in renewable energies. Is we this are the way? Yeah, actually we are exploring the opportunities to widen the scope of uh, restricting the use of single-use plastics. Now we have restrictions on plastic bags, single-use plastic bags, but now we, we are planning to widen the scope, as I said. For instance, plastic cups, those, everybody knows those uh, either transparent or white, very fluffy uh, plastic cups. Uh, are those the ones which should be restricted or is there any other products which should be included in, to, the, uh, to, to the program or legislative proposal? So uh, most obviously we cannot ban all the single-use plastics at least in one go, but we can take decisive steps to this direction. And Katharina and others ask if there will be any specific action on packaging, especially multi-layer packaging. Um, sometimes you go to a supermarket, you see just uh, maybe one fruit with a lot of mm. packaging. Is the Commission doing something about it? Well, we have to, obviously we have to look at this work stream too. But I would like to highlight that everything cannot be solved by creating new directives or new laws. We need legislative action for sure, which we are planning to do. But then we need new innovation in industry sector. And third, we need uh, consumers who are willing to do conscious choices. We have excellent examples of consu empowering consumers in, for instance, eco-labeling or energy labeling. Everybody who today buys a refrigerator or washing machine wants to select according the, the consumption of energy. So at least last time, a couple of weeks ago, when I bought this washer, uh, of course, I uh, selected uh, the one which was uh, triple A plus triple pluses. <laughs> so we, we need to find ways to empower consumers. But I, I must say that after last week announcement of plastic strategy, we have got a lot of positive feedback from industry. For instance, Tetra Pak announced that um, they will ensure that all components of its products are recyclable by, by 2030 and their aim is to substantially increase the use of bio-based plastics. Also one major hamburger chain has said that their aim is to have uh, all 38,000 restaurants to recycle 100% of packaging by 2025. So not only the laws, but also the, the deliberate actions from, uh, from business sector and consumers are needed.
Yeah, apparently we have also data that 24% of Europeans avoid buying something when it's overpackaged, so one citizen out of four. Yeah. So it is also something very felt by Europeans. But someone is asking, uh, several people are asking why we set only 2030 as the date by when all plastics uh, on the EU, all, all uh, packaging, uh, should be recyclable. Is it not too late to ask uh, some people? Last um, year, was it December, European Parliament and the Council approved a legislation which uh, said that 55% of all plastic packaging must be recycled by 20, was it 2030? Uh, so 55% should be recycled. In order to achieve this figure, or even go above it, uh, our proposal, which I already mentioned in the beginning, is very important, namely to create standards for the, the, pa the packaging plastic. So in other terms, create the European standard for the plastic which can be used for packaging. This will help to achieve this 55% by 2030, or even we can uh, achieve better results and faster if we manage to get this measure right. So according our current estimation is that 2030 is realistic target, but we don't have anything against if we manage to reach the target earlier. And Caesar asks, how about considering legislation to make packaging less complex and easy to recycle something that compel the uh, producer to do so. Exactly, this is, uh, this is um, one of our work stream. We, try, we want to create European legislation for two issues which makes easier to recycle plastic. First, the quality standards for packaging plastic and second, quality standards for recycled plastics. So the two measures to co together create the single market for recycling plastics and for recycled plastics. So um, these are the technical reasons why the single market doesn't function in, uh, in plastic waste at the moment and we want to address them. Laura wonders how are we going to work with industry and companies? So do you have positive signs from the, your contact you had probably also with uh, members of the industry, producer, packaging uh, producers? Yeah, plastics industry and, and all the other industries have been very interested in, in re reducing the use of plastics or at least getting better uh, single market for recycled plastics. For instance, many cosmetics companies have already deliberately announced that they want to get rid of microplastics, those uh, little bits which are used in, in scrubbing cream, cream, for instance. And this is very good because uh, every year we release significant amount of microplastic to our oceans and rivers and that's why uh, deliberate action from industry side is needed. But also many others since last week uh, announcement, many, many companies we have found from the press has announced that they will uh, improve the recycling of, of the packaging material. They are also asking us to create uh, standards for biodegradable plastics uh, so that it's more sustainable than it is at the moment. And also, I mean, consumer organizations have been very uh, helpful because they, they obviously want to improve uh, the situation where consumers can make responsible conscious choices and choose not to use as much plastic as, as uh, previously. And Carolina asks, what can be done to educate children in this area and raise consciousness in schools? And if I may ask, uh, did you teach your children uh, how to deal with plastics in any way? Well, um, all the families can, can naturally do a lot. Um, in our family, we live in Belgium here. We, of course, recycle plastic bottles, even though the bottles as such are not recycled. They most probably are, are, are melted or I, actually I don't know what is done to the plastic waste or plastic puddles here in Belgium. As a consumer, I would like to know. Um, also, we use um, uh, 
sustainable bags or fabric black, uh, bags instead of single-use plastic bags. And uh, I mean, everyday choices by the families is the way. It, it's the way to to teach uh, uh, responsible consumers. And if consumers start selecting more sustainable solutions, then the business must follow. So never under, uh, underestimate the power of consumers. And that's why it's not only the laws or directives which matters, but also um, also. Uh, or, or consuming patterns, and they are taught in in families. One additional thing I have to add to you that um, we are getting rid of single uh, or the plastic uh, bottles in my office, so we will replace it by tap water or water coming from the bigger tanks instead of using uh, plastic bottles. Also, I, I introduced um, commission plastic strategy, we try to reduce significant use of plastic and, and recycle mm -hmm. those plastics which are necessary to use. Even schools can help, sure. can help in this? In this schools uh, plays a crucial role. Schools, uh, schools plays a crucial role, even though I believe that homes are primary sources of information in this kind of issues, but of course schools can play a significant role. Eleftheria asks about having to pay for plastic bags in Greece. What is the reason for this? So, uh, we need to create incentives for ordinary citizens um, to do right things and to make conscious choices. Once plastic has a t price tag, environmental price tag, for instance, uh, somebody has to pay about it and single, especially single-use plastic bags are not always necessary. So that's why creating economic incentive for consumer, it has a positive effect to the consumer behavior and, and uh, then it has a real impact to the, uh, to the use of um, plastics. And Villa Ivan says that companies can be using waste as a raw material. How does the plastic strategy make contribute to this? Well, this is a, a major issue. I have already mentioned a couple of times that our aim is to create European legislation, European standards for uh, plastic uh, packaging. So in other terms, what kind of plastic can be used for packaging, for instance, ham and cheese. So once we get this standard right, uh, it creates a European-wide market for plastic packaging waste. As a consumer, as a normal European, I find it very uh, upsetting and, and com confusing that uh, in, in my family, for instance, we cannot recycle those cheese and, and ham packages. And I, I can guarantee that there are many, lots of those. Of course, we try to avoid them by buying sliced ham, which is wrapped to the paper. But again, the paper is covered by plastic. So it's not much better. So uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that there are hundreds of uh, millions or millions of people in Europe who would like to recycle plastic packaging if it would make any sense. And from economic point of view, I must say that can you imagine that only 5% of the value of plastic packages retains in the European economy? 95% is burned away in incineration plants or, or then the, the packages are dumped to the landfill. It doesn't make any sense. We have to change this. We have another question from Caesar. Uh, can we do more to help Eastern European countries comply with recycling uh, quotas, with the, mm. those objectives? We know that some countries have more problems than others. Certainly we do. Um, if looking at, for instance, uh, existing allocations of structural funds for environmental and waste, waste management, uh, there are significant amount of money for this purpose. We have already allocated in this financial uh, framework 5.5 billion euros for helping cohesion countries to improve waste management and improve environmental uh, based economies. So money is not the primary problem. Uh, Another thing what we can do 
we already do it, but we, we are planning to do more, is to provide technical assistance for local authorities and governments to change the way they deal with waste. And this is very important because uh, this helps the countries to, to be part of the single market of waste. So we talked earlier whether it's possible to get economic growth at the same time when reducing the, the amount of waste it is if our economy is based on circular principle. So that's why we have to, to make sure that uh, all the countries can benefit from new market, new single market of waste. And uh, Seppo asks, uh, there are different types of plastics. Some of them are accepted for recycling and some of them are not. For a normal consumer, sometimes it's a bit confusing. It's difficult to identify the packages that are suitable for recycling from those who are not. Is the Europe uh, uh, helping with clear and simple labeling for accepted for recycling uh, plastics? Easy, easy to understand. It's easy to understand and this is what confuses not only me but uh, many other fellow Europeans. So, um, yes, we will do quality standards for plastic packaging, then we will create quality standards for recycled plastics, but then we also want to improve labeling so that uh, ordinary consumers can uh, select which bin to put what kind of plastics. For instance, I must admit that I thought that biodegradable plastic bags which are used for bio, uh, bio waste, they are, they are good as such. But they are not necessarily good as such if you don't treat them properly. So biodegradable plastic bags degrade only in certain circumstances. And you cannot mix this plastic with uh, oil-based plastics. So, so we need measures like labeling so that consumers can really make conscious choices and right choices and reduce the amount of plastic waste. So yeah, we are, we are working on this field. Dan is raising the point of pollution in our oceans, in our seas. How does the plastic strategy address this? Yeah, there are several things. First, uh, one million ton, tons every year of plastics goes to the oceans, one million tons. And like my uh, dear colleague Franz Timmermans said, that according our statistics and international statistics, if nothing uh, is done in 2050, there are more plastics than fish in our oceans in terms of weight. So this is, this is horrible scenario. And also it's a matter of health of human being because uh, the more there is plastics, the more pla in the ocean, the more there are microplastics which are eaten by the fish. And at the end of the day, we eat the fish. Uh, so, so we are. I mean, this microplastic problem is not only environmental problem, even though it's it's a significant environmental problem, but it's a matter of human health. So, first proposal from Commission side is to restrict the use of intentionally added microplastics to the cosmetic products. It will reduce the amount of microplastics in the oceans. But even more important is to prevent uh, ma marine littering. And there, uh, again, there we have a concrete legislative proposal which uh, forces or encourages harbors to create proper collection points where boats can bring to the, uh, the, the plastic waste instead of throwing them to the oceans. And so, so many things can be done and also if we man manage to restrict the use of single-use plastic items further, it doesn't end up to the uh, peaches and from there to the ocean. Uh, Luigi raises the point about tackling bottled water. We have mm. many uh, this uh, bottle of uh, plastic uh, with water inside. The Commission will make uh, a proposal on drinking water next week. How will this help to reduce plastic bottles? Will this have any effect on that? This drinking water directive is more about the quality of uh, water. Like one of my colleagues said, water is a human right issue, but plastic bottle is not. So we have to take care that uh, in the future, uh, also under the pressure of climate change, there is sufficient amount of drinking water available. 
uh, for Europeans. But at the same time, we have to take measures which reduces, reduces the amount of plastic bottles circulating in our economy. And also we have to make sure that all those plastic bottles are really circulating and not dumped or incinerated in our economy. So uh, the more the plastic bottles are recycling, the less uh, there's a need to produce additional plastic bottles. There are differences between the member states uh, today. In some countries, plastic bottles are made of hard plastic, whereas in the others, uh, the, they are very soft bottles and they cannot be recycled. So I prefer uh, the first option where plastic bottles can be recycled and, and reused several times uh, after one after another. Andras asks, what about all the people working in the packaging industry? So if a, someone is working in the packaging industry, should be worried about his job now? Not necessarily, because um, our aim is to use more recycled plastic for packaging. So from a worker point of view, there is no difference whether the raw material is recycled plastic or virgin plastic. But from environment, from economic point of view, it makes a lot of change, uh, sense or change. There's a difference. So that's why we want to ensure that in the future, the packaging industry is using much more recycled uh, plastics than virgin plastics. So there will be hope to keep their job and maybe to create jobs. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big believer of circular economy. I believe that circular economy as a whole is one of the biggest megatrends in the world uh, market economy. You, you should compare it to, um, to digitalization, for instance, and globalization. So um, reducing the use of uh, virgin plastic does not mean that economic growth would, would be hampered by this measure. On the contrary, the more we can create new business models and recycle rare uh, raw materials, the more added value stays in Europe and less we have to pay of oil to the third countries. And Bianca wonders if every country in the EU is prepared to recycle. Do they have all the necessary facility to implement this? Uh, we know that in, in the strategy there are also some major concern in the ports, which is an important part of uh, where uh, yeah. waste should be recycled. What, what, uh, what is the situation? Do you think every country in the EU is ready to, to, to recycle? There are big differences between the member states on the readiness to recycle uh, waste, including plastic waste. But we have to change the situation. First, we have to create European-wide market for plastic uh, waste. Second, we have to help the countries which are lacking behind to improve their waste management systems. And here I already mentioned we have uh, financial means but also technical assistance available to do so. And then to port facilities, there are differences between also between the ports. Some ports have better facilities to collect plastic waste, whereas the others doesn't have anything. And it has a big impact to the, to the marine littering. Unfortunately, some ships are throwing away their plastic waste to the oceans and also some fishers, uh, fishermen leave their fishing um, equipments to the sea after using it. So we have to make sure that all the ports have good facilities to collect plastic waste because it's, at least uh, in my opinion, it's the lowest hanging fruit what we can uh, imagine in order to reduce the marine littering. So this should help also, uh, Labo was asking with marine littering from ships, uh, fishing vessels, all kind of boats, uh, this should address, uh, help to address that problem. Exactly, we have to help member states and local authorities to address these issues so everybody can imagine that if we just make the facilities available where people can bring their plastic waste instead of throwing them to the ocean, it's the easiest way to reduce marine littering. And someone asked, China, I heard that China stopped importing our plastic waste from Europe. What, is this a problem for Europe? Can we tackle this problem or are we gonna be 
uh, under uh, mountains of waste that we used to export to China. Yeah, when looking at the situation from Chinese perspective, I, I think they did the only right thing. Why to import others' trash? So I have to congratulate Chinese authorities to take this decisive decision. From European perspective, if putting it positively, it creates great incentives for us Europeans to create more sustainable way, uh, ways to reduce plastic waste, but also to recycle plastics. So somebody may say that uh, we are in the middle of plastic crisis or plastic waste crisis. But uh, I want to see this as an, this as an opportunity. It, uh, it puts pressure on us to deal with plastic waste and, and uh, it only speed up the process which we have been envisaging to change. So now we are going towards the end of this chat. Can I ask you, so what uh, will be our next steps? The next steps that you... Okay, uh, from Commission perspective, there are uh, one legislative proposal on the table which, uh, which is about to port uh, plastic collection facilities. Second uh, legislative proposal will come later this year where we want to restrict uh, further the use of single plastic items. Then we have started to work together with stakeholders including industry to, uh, to identify how we should standardize plastic uh, waste how we should standardize uh, biodegradable plastic and, and, uh, and recycled plastic, etc. So this work is moving forward at the moment. But at the same time, we need a lot of input from consumers and from industry side, because everything cannot be tackled only by launching new legislation. Thank you very much, Vice President. I think that you explained how these steps should help changing the way plastic is produced, consumed and recycled. Exactly. And so to rethink plastics, to make plastics fantastic again. Thank so uh, thank you also to all our audience. And now we will uh, see a last short uh, video on uh, the strategy. Thank you again. Plastic is everywhere. We can't live without it. But we need to use it more intelligently and reuse it more, and in some cases, not use it at all. Citizens understand the challenge our use of plastics poses. They are already changing their own habits and expect us to act too. But to have a real impact, we need coordinated action by all those involved. That's why we are presenting a plastic strategy to change the way we design, produce, use and recycle plastics. It's good for our environment and it's good for our economy too. Citizens have a central role in our plastics strategy. A lot will depend on their consumption patterns. This is why we want to improve product design and promote innovative products. Our aim is to allow consumers to make conscious choices, which I'm convinced will be favorable to the environment. We also want to make sorting and recycling easier. The investment plan for Europe will help us to finance new solutions to put these ideas in practice. You want action to tackle plastic pollution for our rivers, our oceans, our health. And we are listening. Our measures will reduce single-use plastic, reduce microplastics and reduce packaging. European consumers use plastics every day but increasingly and rightly demand more environmentally friendly products. We want to help European industry respond to this demand. Europe can lead the way for the rest of the world. <laughs>